All right, guys. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the first five things that you should do to attempt Gen Civic. Now, this video is mainly for the 1.5 turbo motors or the Type R's, whatever, because with those cars, obviously, there's a lot more tunability of them and stuff. But I guess some of these can be also used for the NA motors, whatever. So the first thing that you should do to your attempt Gen Civic is the intercooler. Now, again, this is for the 1.5 turbos or the, the 2 liter turbos, but the intercooler is a huge necessity with these cars because the heat soak is terrible. I'm on a G plus intercooler and I absolutely love this intercooler. It has been great for me. The pulls are very consistent. There's really no more heat soak. With the stock one, it heat soaked after like three pulls. It was really bad. If you're gonna do like any type of performance mods to a uh, 10 gen Honda, you know, with the turbos and stuff, you're gonna want the intercooler. You're gonna, I'm, I, I did not do an intercooler for a long time. I tuned the car and it had an intake even before the intercooler. And I wish I would have known how important they were because I would have done it like first. Uh, but I slept on it. I didn't want to spend the money, but it was well worth it once I did it because it massively changed the car. It didn't really give it necessarily more power. They do add a little more power because the air is cooler, but what it really did was keep the pulls consistent and it, the, it, the car pulls a lot stronger with an intercooler because it pulls time after time and doesn't heat soak like the stock one does. So if you're gonna try to push any kind of power out of a tension uh, Civic with the turbo motors, you're gonna want an intercooler and probably ASAP right off the bat, I would start with that. Speaking of cooling though, let's go into the next one which will be the cold air intake or any kind of, uh, you know, air intake that's aftermarket. I'll go ahead and pop the hood here, that way you guys know what I'm working with. Any kind of, you know, cold air intake or even a short rim intake is a lot better. Obviously, a cold air intake, a full one, is a lot better than a short ram because those sit a lot lower and they get a lot more cooler air. But anything is better than the stock one, okay? Because the stock one's really restrictive. So if you're gonna wanna mod your tension in Honda for more power, an intake is also essential. It'll really help keep the pulls more consistent as well. Also, it makes really cool sounds. You know, like that you got that little psh sound whenever you let off the throttle and you hear the intake sucking in when you're on throttle. Um, honestly, this makes driving a lot more fun. So that's definitely well worth it. The third thing that you should do to any tension, this goes for any of them, is lower it. Okay, lower the car. Okay, yeah, yeah this goes for any car technically, but well, especially with these cars, the wheel gap, I mean, you're talking probably like two inches. This is on uh, D2 springs. Okay, so with D2 springs, it's a two inch drop. Um, uh, it's a lot lower and it, I mean, the fitment's flush as you can see, uh, and it's a lot better like that. I mean, I have a picture of my car when it was stock and you can see just how terrible the ride height was. Again, that's for any car, but still, tension Civic, you wanna wanna mod it, lower it. Okay, put it on springs. The springs are only 170 bucks or you can go coils, whatever, whatever works. I'm gonna have to go on coils pretty soon because I'm, I'm starting to track the car now and it's just a lot better for the track is a stiffer suspension. But no matter what, springs, something, lower it. Lower the car. Hey, check that out. The sun came out. Look at that. The fourth thing that you're gonna wanna do to your tension Honda is tune it. Okay, I probably should have said this before the springs, but tune it, okay, tune it. Especially if you have the turbo motors because once you turn up that boost a little bit, it wakes the car right up. The SI stock make around 16 to 17 pounds of boost. Um, and you know, it's great. The car is pretty peppy, but I mean with the tune, especially just the K-Tuner OTS2, which comes with the K-Tuner, you know, you can go to 19.5 PSI, you can go to 21 or you can go to 23 and you know, going to 23, that plus six pounds of boost really wakes the car up. I mean, it adds an extra, I think 40, uh, pound feet of torque and 34 horsepower, I believe. Uh, I mean, but even, even just with that, it really wakes the car up. I mean, you're going to want to tune this car. Okay. Again, I slept on that. I had this car for 50,000 miles before I ever tuned or did anything with it power-wise. I really wish I would've done it sooner. This car is a freaking blast, guys. This, this car is pretty fast too for what it is. I'm on Farable now, but even with the OTS tune, 23 PSI that came with the K-Tuner, you know, I do have weight reduction and some other things, but this car is really freaking quick. I mean, it punches you in your seat pretty good. And, uh, you know, the second that you get that tune and you wake the car up and you, you floor it for the first time, you'll get a big smile on your face. Do not sleep on the tunes for these cars, okay? Because like I said, all, it, especially with the turbo motors, with the NA motors, you really can't do much with them from what I know of because it's naturally aspirated. But at least with the SIs or the, even the sport hatches, whatever the turbo motors, uh, if you turn up the boost a little bit on them, it is a freaking world of difference i mean it absolutely pulls a lot harder and it's just more fun to drive so the fifth thing that you should do to your honda civic is a freaking giant wing 
I'm just kidding, that's a joke. You don't, <laughs> you don't have to do that, all right? Most people don't wanna do that. I'm just kidding. The real fifth thing that you should do to your tension Honda Civic, actually, I guess really any car, but we're still, for the tension Civic, is new wheels, okay? And I'm talking lighter ones, all right? Because the stock ones on this car are 29 pounds. Dude, they're like 30 pounds a piece, bro. It's 120 pounds of just wheel, okay? That's ridiculous. I, you're gonna want something better. I, I gotta, even, even just, let's say you're not big into like racing or, or going fast. It makes the car look a lot better, okay, because the wheels on these cars are OEM. They're okay, but I don't know why the SI got the chrome ones and then the Sport got the dark ones. I don't know why, but either way, they're heavy, okay? So not only can they can you make the car look better drastically with different wheels, you can relieve a lot of unsprung weight. I personally am on Ad uh, Adahan AH06s. These are 19 pounds a piece, so that's 10 pounds lighter each wheel. Okay, so 20, about 20 pounds a piece, that's 80 pounds of wheel all around, but the acceleration and the braking and the turning is all better. The whole performance of the car is a little better with lighter wheels because it's less work to stop it, to accelerate, to turn, whatever. It makes a bit of a difference. And like I said, the car looks worlds better. Plus the fitment uh, with these wheels is actually really good. As you can see, I mean, it's, that's pretty good. So I'm very happy with the fitment with these wheels. And like I said, that's a pretty universal mod. If you, you don't even have to want to go fast. You know, let's say you just want to park at a car show. Different wheels. I, everyone really knows this, but especially on these cars, they're so freaking heavy, dude. Okay, 30 pounds a wheel is ridiculous. I mean, I don't know what the other cars and other uh, brands are, you know, what their wheels weigh, but I mean, that's, that's a lot of weight, okay? Considering that you could buy wheels that are 10 pounds lighter for not even that much money. I mean, personally, these wheels are like 900 bucks. I got a good deal on them. I got them for like 670. And for 670 bucks, I mean, that's a lot of a lot of performance that you gain just from a wheel. Now, again, I mean, a lot of these are, you know, universal for, you know, every car, but isn't everything. I mean, especially for the Tension Civic, though, you're going to really want the intercooler if you're boosted uh, because, I, like I said, the heat soak on these cars are freaking terrible. I mean, seriously, you do like three poles and the car just doesn't want to go anymore. It's actually pretty upsetting how bad it was when I was tuned and had my stock intercooler. Luna didn't want to do anything. I would do like two poles and it like in like summertime after that she just she was done uh, she, she like there was like no more power now That's completely different even with a cheap intercooler. This car runs so much better so much more consistently and uh, You know, I even have a short rim intake the better intakes are the quarter intakes which go all the way down You know under like kind of by the bottom of the bumper and that doesn't get any really heat from the engine bay like this one does even though there's like a little wall here that only does so much. Obviously, this is still warm to the touch. So obviously, it is sucking a little bit of uh, heat from the engine bay no matter what. But if you're going to want like the best cooling setup possible or whatever, you're going to want a full-on quarter intake. The reason I don't have one is because one, I have brake cooling tubing. So like I can't really put anything down there. And two, I drive this car a lot. And if I ever have to go through a puddle, that would be a bad day. I also, I, I do DoorDash, and so I drive on different roads all the time. And God forbid I ever had to go through a puddle, that that saves me. And if I had a quarter intake, I wouldn't be able to do it. So, and guys, little tip, don't hydro lock your motors. If you buy a quarter intake, please don't go through puddles. Like if, if it's a really deep puddle, don't drive through it. You will, I, I've known people that have done it. Don't hydro lock your motor. It's a very bad thing. Um, you could also do a muffler delete, which is really cheap. Um, I could throw it as like an honorable mention thing. A muffler delete is cheap. It was like 90 bucks for me. Uh, it did help the turbo spool quicker. Car's a lot more fun to drive and it's definitely a lot louder. I'll, I guess I'll throw it at the end. A muffler delete could be the sixth thing you should do. It's very cheap. You could buy exhaust, which is like 800 bucks. I wasn't gonna spend that type of money. I actually like the HDMI exhaust tip. That's just me personally. So I'm not gonna mess with it. Uh, muffler delete, they say that the exhaust on these cars is like the best exhaust for it. I don't know how true that is, but a muffler delete in itself really made the car sound a lot better. And like I said, she's a little peppier because the turbo can spool quicker. But yeah, that's pretty much it guys. That's pretty much like the first five things that you should do. Of course though, this is kind of objective, but out of my experience with these cars, if you're gonna wanna build any kind of power or even just for more drivability, those are the first five things you should do, okay? I really can't express the importance of the cooling with these cars because, like I said, they get hot and, you know, especially because they're boosted, you know, the second that you heat soak anything, the car just loses a lot of power. So if you're going to want to do any kind of power or even just kind of any spirited driving, cooling is really the biggest thing here. Lower it, you know, some nice wheels on it. It'll handle really well and uh, I think you'll be very happy. And assuming that you're watching this video because you either just bought a Tension Honda or I guess any kind of newer Honda because they're all boosted, whatever, even the 11 Gen, they're great cars. 
They're absolutely fantastic cars. You will love them. I absolutely adore this car. And yes, it's very modded, but even before, even when it was bone stock, blast. But, and I had a 2019 Sport Hatch before this one, which was a CVT. So, it doesn't matter what you drive. They're a, they're a good time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. All right, as always, if you liked it, leave a like. I'm not gonna beg you to subscribe, but if you don't subscribe, I'm gonna go to your house and steal every one of your charging cables. And then you're gonna have to go to Walmart and buy more. So think about that one for a minute.